Welcome, everybody. This is Jim Lee from Climate Viewer News. It's April 24th, 2017, and uh, let's talk about cloud seeding. So uh, some stuff went down today, and um, a friend of mine sent me th something that a friend said, and we were very confused, to say the least, um, by what we saw. So, you know, of course... A discussion ensued and let's just uh break it down for everybody so there was this conference that just happened where the weather modification association uh met with the at the western snow conference and uh patrick roddy who is a friend of mine um attended and oddly enough he came back and he made this statement in, in case you were wondering where, what I was doing in Boise this week, WMA members, Weather Modification Association members, seed clouds with inert, harmless silver iodide to make it rain. Max altitude, 18,000 feet. Not millions of tons of aluminum, barium, strontium, etc. at 30,000 plus feet. We need them on our side. And my stomach just started to turn. I was like, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> you know. <sighs> so Patrick and I went to the EPA hearing in uh, September of 2015, where we talked about chemtrails straight to the EPA's face. It was on C-SPAN. And I consider Patrick a, fin a friend. So I'm not here to disparage Patrick. I'm here to talk about cloud seeding. So let's make that clear up front. Okay, now, of course, I went over here and I said, I can't believe what I'm reading. What are you doing? Um, and instead of like responding to me, well, let's just first deal with what this conference is. So this conference was held out in Boise, Idaho, and here's their uh, you know meeting notes. Joint meeting, Western Snow Conference and Weather Modification Association at the hotel right here. Mr. Roddy was there and you see their notes. Basically, you know, we had a breakfast, we had people talk, you know, so Patrick got to meet a bunch of guys who talk about weather modification and do it. And obviously he came away with that after speaking with them going, you know, these are normal ass people. And I have known that for the last seven years. I expect that, you know, I think that, that most people are surprised that when they actually meet somebody who modifies the weather, that they are real people with you know, normal concerns. You know, a lot of these guys believe that what they're doing, they do to help people. And I'm willing to accept that. I do not believe that every single person who modifies the weather is evil. I think that's also a common misconception. Um, I watched a great documentary, and I think it's on Hulu, um, called Owning the Weather. And they actually interview some guys from Texas, you know, from the Texas Weather Modification Association, and they make it real for you. You know, that these are real people who are working a job. So I'm not here to disparage these individuals either. I'm saying what we're about to talk about is why cloud seeding as a practice is a bad thing. So one of the things that happened at this um, meeting was something called Snowy. Now, Patrick did not mention this in his Facebook post, but I'm going to bring it up because it's important. Snowy is the seeded and natural orographic wintertime clouds, the Idaho experiment. This is like the, you know, 14 umps, you know, attempt for science to prove that cloud seeding has somewhat of a predictable result. And so far, they have failed, they have failed, they have failed every time. We'll get into that in a minute. That's one of the reasons cloud seeding should be illegal, is that it's completely unpredictable to this day, after 60 years of doing it. So let's let's get into this. What is snowy and why does it matter? And you'll come over here. Here's a great article about it. Atmospheric scientists wrap up winter cloud seeding project in southwest Idaho. And um, there's a couple good quotes out of this thing. But what you basically need to know is that the UW researchers used the National Science Foundation funded King Air Research Av aircraft to conduct the cloud seeding project from January 7th to March 16th. So I want to point this out for everybody. January 7th up to March 16th of this year, 
they were doing the snowy project where they were doing intensive radar, you know, scans of the clouds as they were seeding them intensively through this whole project. Now, now does how many people can recall during the January to March um, time frame massive blizzards or snowy conditions on the East Coast? Because that's another reason cloud seeding should be illegal. Downwind effects, they're very important. People are damaged downwind by these aggravated storms. Get into it in just a minute. So anyway, this is snowy. This is what happened. It happened in, uh, you know, Boise, Idaho. It's the Idaho Power Company. I'm going to get into that too. And, you know, they talk about silver iodide. So back to Patrick. Oh my God. I don't want any private conversations popping up during this video please so then patrick comes back and he says for those instead of responding you know to just my simple why are you supporting cloud seeding um he says for those claiming silver iodide is deadly it's not and i'm like bro this really doesn't have anything to do with whether silver iodide is poisonous or not it's about you know all these things so seriously call me here's my phone number he didn't call me i was like oh jesus christ so he didn't get it. And then, you know, a whole bunch of people from the community started raging about how, oh, this is tacky, it's in public, why are you doing this? And I'm going, look, I'm just trying to get a straight answer from a guy I consider a colleague and a friend. Why are you now singing the praises of cloud seeding now that you've actually shook the hand of a cloud seeder? <laughs> I mean, it's a simple question, right? Um, so we get down here to the end of the road and for some reason, they all scroll down. If anyone can prove to me that WMA members are involved in the covert spraying program, tens of millions of tons of highly toxic aluminum, barium, strontium, etc., dispersed in Class A airspace, <laughs> and not just above board, above board, and regulated cloud seeding, many pounds of relatively harmless. Now he's changed it to relatively har harmless. <sighs> It's not about how poisonous this stuff is, but it is still whatever. Um, relatively harmless silver iodide dispersed lower than 18,000 feet. I'm all ears. Sure, they won't expose the covert program, but nobody besides us is doing that either. Speculation presented as fact only harms our credibility. So I'm like, man, I'm just trying to teach you, you know, get you to stop talking about cloud seeding as a good thing because, I mean, as a general headspace for me weather modification bad cloud seeding bad modifying the atmosphere bad i don't want anybody to control the weather at all i don't want clouds made by people intentionally or unintentionally i don't want space weather modification i don't like harp i don't like barium dumps in space i don't like rockets you know all that stuff i don't like anything that is going to modify the sky to allow somebody to control it in a way where they can monetarily benefit from it. I believe that that should be the one thing left on this planet that is natural. Call me old fashioned. So for him to be condoning this, I'm going to myself, maybe I have not, maybe I personally have not explained well enough why cloud seeding is a bad thing so that people in the community can all understand this same time. So tonight, doing a special little video. This is not to throw shade at Patrick. This is to explain why cloud seeding is a bad thing. Very succinctly. Um, and shout out to Robert Scott, who very clearly in this photo points out the EPA even says that silver iodide is poisonous. But we won't get into that barrel of worms. We're going to talk about weather modification. And just to further elevate here's a paper over on pubmed.gov elevated silver barium and strontium in antlers vegetation and soils sourced with cwd cluster areas piezoelectric crystals represent the transmissible pathogenic agent in tses whoa that's a mouthful but the fun part is right here the elevations of agba and sr okay 
that's silver, barium, and strontium, were thought to originate from both natural, geochemical, and artificial pollutant sources, stemming from the common practice of aerial spraying with cloud seeding, silver iodide, or barium crystal nuclei for rainmaking. What? Did he just say silver iodide or barium crystal nuclei for rainmaking? In these drought-prone areas in North America, the atmospheric spraying of barium based aerosols for enhancing refracting radar and radio transmission communications as well as spreading of waste ba blah 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 on pasture land so yeah i mean silver iodide showing up in antlers of deer maybe it could show up in bones of humans i'm not a scientist let's move along the point of this is he asked very specifically in this question, can you prove to me that a weather modification association member is involved in covert spraying poke programs? And here's how I responded. Yes, the NASIG DACA, Wright Patterson US Air Force Base is a member of the weather modification association and they are on the corporate roster right here. And you can see this is the weather modification association and on their corporate roster right here, member information, corporate roster, you can see right here in the middle of the damn page, NASIC DACA, it says Gregory Marks, Watson Way, Technical Library at Wright Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. Why does that matter? Now, see, you know, like anybody else would be just like, okay, well, it's just a library on an Air Force Base. Maybe they're just, you know, making books out of all this. Well, uh, how about a FOIA? <laughs> oh, boom. Can I get an applause? Please, thank you very much. Um, so that the FM NASIC DACA Wright Patterson Air Force Base, this is a FOIA about weather modification and why and how, you know, Wright Patterson Air Force Base is supposed to gobble up all this weather modification research. And you see down here at the bottom, you know, that they're supposed to find all available sources of information and gather it for intelligence for the purpose of using it for military purposes in the future. So basically, Wright Patterson Air Force Base is a member of the Weather Modification Association to benefit from their research to make it a weapon. Don't get it twisted. So I threw that at him and I said, you know, you got played by these guys. I mean, and here's the proof and here's the paper. And this is U.S. military discusses future of weather warfare despite in mod ban. And this was I pulled this straight from the um, U.S. Army website. And it was at right there. Um, PLH.AF.mil. And this is the U.S. Army Phillips, um, the Air Force Phillips Lab, Hanscom Air Force Base. And this is all linked to Wright Patterson. And you can read it right here. Um, it's the Air Force Geophysical, you, um, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but anyway, so let's move through this thing real quickly. You scroll down here to the bottom. What's important? This slide right here. Cloud seeding using carbon black. Weather modification using carbon black to increase cirrus cloud cover. Deny visual satellite or high altitude reconnaissance or decrease light level for nighttime operations. So that's two reasons why the u.s air force creates chemtrails using carbon black dust out of the back of jet aircraft from the exhaust not some fancy ass pipe they use carbon black emissions from planes to create cirrus cloud cover and they are a member of the weather modification association so it goes back to him and i'm like so and there's that slide there, there's a WMA raise over 18,000 feet. Let's put that thing to rest. So why is cloud seeding so bad? Because it is dangerous. It is unpredictable. This snowy thing that we were just talking about, this is not the first time this has happened. Recently, they did one called the Wyoming Weather Modification Pilot Program, WWMPP. Okay? And you can see I've got all the junk on it right here from the 20th Conference on Planet Inadvertent Weather Modification, where they had it in 2015. Orographic cloud seeding results from the WMP, WWMPP um, associated studies. Um, that Dow radar that you saw in the picture there, that radar right there, boom, the Dow 7. Um, that's what they're talking about right, sure. 
um, you know, results from the dual polarization dial radar and the impact of ground-based glaciogenic seeding on orographic clouds and precipitation over a mountain, a detailed case study, trace chemical analysis of water and soil during the WWMPP. So this is the last big research project that they did on cloud seeding, trying to prove that it works, prove that they can prove what they're doing to the people that they're paying. <laughs> And they failed. They failed miserably. This is a cloud seeding generator right that right there. We're going to get into a whole bunch of more of those in just a second. But let me blow this up for you. Um, right about here. Here's the results. Analysis showed that cloud seeding produced a 3% increase in precipitation with a 28% probability that this result happened by chance. And this is after millions of dollars invested in trying to prove this WWMPP. They failed, they failed, they failed. Um, most scientists and stati statisticians wouldn't accept this level of uncertainty, says Breed, who was part of the NCAR team who did that one. Flash forward. This is EOL. This is NCAR, UCAR. Once again, doing it again. They're doing it in Idaho. So... The reason, reason number one why cloud seeding should be made illegal, it's very unpredictable. They have no clue whether they're actually making it rain or actually decreasing rain. They actually have something called overseeding, where you put too many aerosols, too many particles into the, into the cloud, and then you find out there's not enough water there for all of the aerosols that are there. So what happens is they never get big enough to drop to the ground. You've actually now created drought-like conditions in a location where you were trying to cloud seed to make it rain. Similarly, he says, well, they're doing hail mitigation. Hail mitigation is a guy who owns a crop buys crop insurance. You can go to guaranteedweather.com. There's all kinds of crop insurance, you know, weather insurance companies. And they'll say, um, I want to insure my crop so that it doesn't get destroyed. The insurance company, the weather insurance company, now pays somebody to go out and modify the weather over that crop to ensure that hail does not destroy it. So they don't have to pay out millions of dollars. Now, when they do that, what happens when you go and do hail mitigation to try to make the hail smaller, but suddenly we see YouTube videos of hail the size of basketballs? Is it possible that they got bigger because cloud seeding for hail mitigation is the exact same process as cloud seeding for rain augmentation, snowpack augmentation. They are sprinkling, particle, sprinkling particles in the sky and hoping it will rain. This is no different than what they did back in 1916. Redneck technology, and they're trying to use every kind of sensor they got to prove that what they're doing works. They have never been able to do it. I got a ton more quotes on that. You know, right here from, uh, this is on climateviewer.com slash geoengineering. The one that pissed them all off, and you can qu quote this to anybody about cloud seeding, makes them mad as hell. Any cloud seeder. If I would have been there at that conference, I would have ate these guys alive. But, you know, Patrick doesn't know this stuff, so I can't blame him for not being armed. Do you understand? So it's not his fault that he didn't know all this stuff, so he couldn't hammer these guys to the wall. But, after today, there will be no excuse. That's right. So um, what I would like to, to really focus on is, is, you know, that this is a repeat offender failure. <laughs> although, this is the quote, although 40 years have passed since the first National Academy of Science report on weather modification, this committee finds itself very much in concurrence with the findings of that assessment 40 years ago. We conclude that the initiation of large-scale operational weather modification programs would be premature. Many fundamental problems must be answered first. It is unlikely that these problems will be solved by the expansion of present efforts, which emphasize on posteriori evaluation of largely uncontrolled exper experiments. We believe that patient investigation of atmospheric process coupled with the exploration of technological applications may eventually lead to the useful lead to useful weather modification, but we emphasize that time scale required for success may be measured in decades. Now, what they are saying there is, since we tested this 40 years ago, 
you guys still haven't been able to prove a damn thing you're saying you're doing and that the likelihood that you'll ever be able to produce useful weather modification can be measured in decades, decades from now. This was said in 2003. Since that statement was made in 2003, these cloud seeders have been butt hurt, panty twisted, pissed off about that statement. The WWMPP was one of these tests where they tried to prove this statement wrong. Eh, we know what we're doing. It's real science. It has efficacy. It still has not happened. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I've got more quotes like that. It was concluded that the tests conducted so far have not yet provided either statistical or physical evidence required to establish that seeding concepts have been scientifically proven. American Meteorological Society, critical assessment of hygroscopic seeding and convective clouds of rainfall enhancement, also 2003, and the list goes on. And I could go on and on. So... The point is that these guys do not have statistical data. They do not have enough sensor power to understand the climate system well enough to predict whether or not what they're doing is beneficial or just random. They also are creating chaotic conditions, which lead to, um, you know, intensified storms downwind, which is why they get off the hook for all this stuff. Most, most of the, the, the states to the east, they don't know this stuff. So where are we? Let's go to this thing. Here's an example of that. Why don't we show the map? Let's do the map. Hold on. Where's my chat room? I gotta, I gotta show the chat room some love. It's buried in here. We know it's got too many windows. Is that it? Oh, there you guys are. Let me pull this boy over here. All right. There's a uh, Jolene and Dominic and Charlene. Well, if you guys mean it, if you guys have any questions, I'll be keeping an eye on this from for the remainder. Um, so what we got going right here? Uh, let me get this thing up. Durr. All right, two screens. Gotta love it. So West Coast cloud seeding supercharges winter storm Jonas. This is an example I did. When did I write this? January 2016. So I did this. Um, you know, during the winter cloud seeding season. And what do I mean by that? Um, it turns out that I have the actual reports from the government that are required by law. Whenever you want to modify the weather in America, there are two laws on the books that basically say you must report it to NOAA. NOAA is the National Oceanic Atmospheric Administration. So there, if you go to corporate, um, corporate.noaa.gov, that's where I originally found the forums. The forms that you fill out, there's two forms. There's an initial report that you form, that you, fail, that you file. And in that form, it says, hey, I'm going to modify the weather in this location. I'm going to use these chemicals and for this long and in this area. Um, and then you do a follow-up where you report some of your results and everything. But anyway, that's all that's required from the national level that you report it to NOAA. So I've got the NOAA reports right here and I, I'm going to see if I can blow that up so you guys can see it, but we'll give you an example of what those look like. Um, this is from 2004. It's a state of Utah, Salt Lake City International Airport. The operator was Barkin International Airport. They paid, or excuse me, the sponsor funding source was Delta Airlines paid Barkin International Airport to do fog suppression. So the airport itself has a system to burn all the, the fog off the, the runways. So that's weather modification. It's covered under the law. They got to report it. So Delta Airlines airlines paid for some weather modification boom it's in the news <laughs> um so you go through these things uh, and what you'll see is that they all kind of look like this you know state of nevada paid desert research institute which is a college to modify the weather using snowpack augmentation this is orographic this is ground-based going to show you that in a second um let's see if we can bring it down just a hair so we can get the dates in there instead of these useless information all right, and what you're going to see is January through May, January through April, January through April, January through May, January through April, 
a January through March. So what you're seeing is pattern is that for some reason, all of these cloud seeding snowpack augmentation, they run in the winter. Big surprise, right? Pacific gas and electric. If you pay your power bill in California to PG and E, you are paying to modify the weather in California because PG and E pays PG and E. They own their own equipment to modify the weather to do snowpack augmentation in Lake Almanor. I'm not going to pronounce that. And <laughs> the, the list goes on. So you guys get the point. And um, this, this, these reports that I got from the government, you know, you can read the information on that. Um, George Stiller is a friend of mine who's a mapper as well. I had him map them out. So you can actually come over here and see those reports on Climate Viewer 3D. Now, these weather modification reports show a pattern. They're all on the West Coast, as you can see here. They are designated by the clouds. So if you go over here to weather um, to climateviewer.org and you click on weather control, it'll be over here in the sidebar like this. Let me close all this up. Go to weather control and then you'll see weather modification ink projects worldwide. I got that turned on. And then I've got all of these ground-based cloud seeding generators turned on. And they are the red and purple ones you see here with text. These are cloud seeding generators that are on the ground. Now that snowy project, the snowy project we were talking about up here that he went to the meeting at, you know, um, the snowy project happened in Boise, 50 miles north of Boise, Idaho. What is that? That's Boise. And what do we have here on my map where they cloud seed in Boise? Idaho. This is actually, um, a Idaho company owned by Idaho Power Seeding Generators, where they're located on the ground. And you might ask yourself, well, Jim, where did you figure that out? Well, I figured it out right here. So I've got all my credits for everything I do. Right? You click the little eye, it's going to pop it up, and you can see Idaho Power Cloud Seeding Projects. Let's see if we can open that image in a new address. There we go. We'll pop that thing up, and you can see it here. Here's the one section, there's Boise. Here's all their other generators and it says down here, green generators, non IPCO, and pink is generators IPCO. So pink ones are owned by Idaho Power Company. Green ones are cloud seeding generators owned by other people. Maybe they're private individuals, maybe they're, you know, doesn't matter. They're not owned by the power company regardless. All these dots are cloud seeding generators on the ground. They operate all winter. So they operate from October to March, April, May, somewhere in there. Never into June. Usually they're off by then, but, and that's just based on what you see here. And they're always broken up and they'll say January to May, January to April, because it's the end of the year. So you also see the corresponding October to December. And there's a whole bunch of those. So, Pretty much what you're going to see on this list is they run from, and then this one says April to October. They just do it the rest of the whole damn year. But it's pretty much in those periods. So October to April of every year, all of these cloud seeding generators are on. So if you look at that and then you watch the weather systems coming in, what you notice is they tend to come in through Washington, come in through the West Coast, and they creep across the East Coast. And then what do we end up with? These mass floods, massive snowstorms, massive hail, tornadoes, all of that. It can be said with 100% certainty that every single day from October to April, May, that all of the weather passing through this massive region you see here is modified that's the other reason cloud seeding should be illegal it because of downwind effects so in this story right here the jonas one what i was doing was showing people this very thing here's what the generators look like you on the right hand side you got the redneck version it's just a propane bottle the chemicals are in this box propane burns the thing it's either acetone or propane, butane, tons of different things there. 
It's going to burn through that metal. What's up, my homeboy? I see you in chat. <laughs> What's up, dude? You should come on the show. <laughs> I'm talking to Devin. Or Evan, excuse me, not Devin. Devin's my homeboy in IRL. Um, so generator types over here. This is a this is the fancy one. As you can see, it has satellite communications, a solar panel, ignition coil, burn head, temperature probe, valve box, and that's got the flare at the top and this big tall thing with huge propane tanks over here on the side. Woo! That's expensive. So when they say Idaho Power owns this one, <laughs> and this is a non-Idaho Power, that's because Jeb owns that one. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. So there's, here's a whole bunch of examples of other types. I mean, this one looks, this is like a snow blower, <laughs> you know what I mean? But it's on top of a mountain. It's got a big pipe here. These are flare trees. They look like this. They actually have the burning material in these flare dispensers. And as they burn, this is the smoke that comes out of them. Looks delicious, right? That's the cloud seeding. Yes, sir, X-ray. That's what we're talking about, sure. As the thunder rolls over my house. Nice. So these are seeding dispensers. Um, some of these are from California. You see here, here's Billy Bob turning on the propane tank right there. And here's somebody for size and scale. You can see how big that damn cloud seeding tower is. So the way this stuff works, it's down here on the ground. Wind blows this way, carries the crystals aloft. They get in the clouds. The clouds drop snow. Snow hits mountain. Snowpack augmentation. That's what they expect to happen. So in all cases of these mountain, you know, ground-based cloud seeding generators, they are usually associated with mountains. Let's see if I can get a better one. Let's put the saddle see the mountain ranges possibly or i could break my internet because i'm streaming live and i'm in the middle of the country but as you can see these are the mountain ranges associated with all these and you know these are on all all winter bad 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 news so for for me i'm going why would somebody not know this and then i went and i listed them all out here wyoming weather modification pilot program that's the wmpp we're talking about two original maps i got them from they associates, uh, this is Central Colorado Rocky Mountain Program, Gen uh, Grand Mesa, Colorado Cloud Seeding Program, Humboldt River Basin Cloud Seeding Program, Carson Walker Basin Cloud Seeding Program. You can see I've got the maps for all this stuff. This is Santa Barbara, California, Idaho Powers right there. And here are the actual downloadable PDFs of all of these things. So cloud seeding, big business, big, big business, has a long history. And it's very chaotic. Um, the, the you know third reason that cloud seeding should be illegal, it is worldwide. Now, I wasn't even going to include this in the video. Maybe you guys can go look it up. Just go to climateviewer.com, hit the top, hit the search, and then put in um, geoengineering and weather modification news week, and then put the word week in there. And you'll see that I was doing like, I was going through Google alerts, and I just don't have the energy or time to do this every single week. I wish I could, because if I could, it would blow your freaking mind. And what I was finding is cloud seeding programs that are government sponsored from around the world. And I was just freaking out at, after reading article after article of just the Philippines. In the Philippines, the government of the Philippines spent several billion, you know, seashells, whatever the hell kind of money they got to cloud seed. And what did they choose to use? 300,000 pounds of salt. So while, you know, Patrick's over here going cloud seeding is just cool and they're good guys they are on our side. Those same cloud seeding companies are going abroad and in, in search of other countries to do this for as a service. And these countries, they don't have all this education about, you know, it's unpredictable. You're not really getting anything for your money. You may actually be destroying property. You may have legal liabilities that are going to run your ass into the ground because the shit should be illegal. Um, and on that note, why don't we bring this one up? So this is a great little article I just found um, from 2016, Seeding Clouds of Uncertainty by Alan. I suggest everybody read it. And it talks about... Um, you know, the fact that they really 
says instead the resultant regular leg, regulatory uncertainty severely encumbers cloud seeding by pr practice by among other things failing to allocate associated rights and liabilities societal technological and regulatory uncertainty therefore combine to hinder beneficial cloud seeding practices and they go on about how they need to find a way to you know legally protect cloud seeding com companies because for the last 60 years they've been doing experiments in the sky taking people's money for bullshit and then you know never being able to prove it to the scientific community while continuing to do it every single day um and nobody's really fully aware of this stuff some states do have uh, requirements to tell the public other states don't um but regardless i think that enough is enough on this sort of thing you know at the end of the day it's such an unpredictable practice that it should not be allowed. And in other countries, there are downwind effects of all this. The fourth reason is the butterfly effect. If there are so many hands in this cookie jar, constantly, simultaneously, doing different things for different reasons, that's why we have the chaotic extreme weather events that we're having today. I honestly believe that. Just a moment while I wet my whistle. So I saw a thing. Um, let me just pull it up real quick. And it was, uh, let me get this thing up over here. It was a uh, weather, Oliver travel. Yeah, Oliver's travel, cloud seeding. And these guys, I mean, you're talking about a freaking travel company, all right? There you go. Bop it up over here for you. Guarantee perfect wedding day weather with Ol Oliver's travels. Okay. This is, you know, the fourth reason why cloud seeding should be illegal because when jackasses like travel companies can say that they can guarantee you perfect wedding day weather for about 150,000 euros and then the same area. The weather insurance guys. Let's see. Guaranteed weather. Let's do that too. And then the, the, the guaranteed weather guys, you know, they come along and they say, well, you know, we got to make sure it doesn't have any, um, you know, we need rain. These guys, guarantee, we guarantee them that it's going to rain in their location. They're going to have a bumper crop this year, you know. Why don't we give your business some weather protection needs like snow protection, weather risk, you know, all this. We're going to make sure it rains in this location. Well, I don't want it to rain in this location. I paid Oliver's travel to make it not rain in this location. You think that shit doesn't happen. You're crazy. <laughs> you're crazy. Because, I mean, when we're talking about this large geographical location and all across the cornfields of Nebraska, which are downwind of the largest weather modification project study in recent history. The red stripes are flight paths, by the way. I didn't explain that. So they fly in the air when they do this, at least according to the map I got. But <laughs> if, if, if down here in corn, you know, corn belt, Nebraska, they're getting pelted with massive basketball sized hail and they say hey we want some hail mitigation on my field and the guy in, in the next field is a competitor says you know well, i really want it to rain <laughs> and one pays north american weather consultants the other guy pays weather modification association he the two call each other and go hey man why don't, why don't we both just you sprinkle something we'll call it a day i mean how redneck is this i don't know but that's definitely the fourth reason. There's too many hands of the cookie to this on a global scale. So the final reason is pretty obvious, and I sh it should go without saying, um, but why not? Let's say it. Why are, why are my pictures mis missing off this page? The yeah. final reason would have to be that it's all going to be turned into a, a weapon. I mean, if you don't know by now that this is all about weaponizing weather, then you don't location at all. Um, that's what that's what's going on here. You know, weather is a force multiplier, owning the weather in 2025. And what do they say they would do by 2005? The Department of Defense would develop carbon black dust technologies. 
and carbon black dust comes out of the back of every plane and they use it to steer the weather. They use it to do all kinds of things, but we're all still bickering about, you know, <laughs> whether chemtrails come out of pipes, pumps, or, you know, if it's done for the Illuminati, the, they're holographic. They got, you know, I want people to grow up. I'm in case you guys don't know by now, I'm devoted to doing this sans the fear sans the bullshit. I don't have time for that. I'm not here for to be popular. I'm here to be effective. And when I see colleagues, friends, you know, spouting, you know, stuff I know was just spoon fed to him. And I understand, you know, cloud seeding is obviously not something that Patrick knows a lot about. And I'm assuming that if a guy as smart as Patrick is, doesn't know this stuff, then this video was necessary and I hope that you guys learned something from it. I think I covered all my tabs. I got a whole bunch of tabs up here. Um, we won't go into bioprecipitation and how cutting down forests has actually affected the weather more than people know. It's kind of new science, but it's kind of a no-brainer. I've known it since I was two. Anybody who's ever lived in the woods and watched a cloud form over a field or over trees knows that clouds can be seeded by trees. So... That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. I hope you guys understand. Bucks should be made illegal. Um, and I gave five good reasons, and I'll probably bullet point those five reasons and post them up on Climate Viewer News in the near future. So you guys um, love you mean it, man. You got, anybody got any questions before I go? Because I think that's it, dude. <laughs> All right, man. Well, to you guys that are up late with me in the chat room, you guys rock ass. I mean, go to sleep, get a job. <laughs> um, and, you know, to Patrick, dude, you should have called me. I guess, you know, since you didn't, it prompted this video and a whole bunch of people are going to learn a whole lot about cloud seeding. But, you know, of course, you know, no hard feelings. And um, that's just it. I don't want things to get lost in text. There was a lot of words said on Facebook today. Hey, sometimes I sound like an asshole. But, you know, the truth is the truth and the truth always sets you free. So... I don't like the practice of cloud seeding. I don't like the practice of geoengineering. I don't like the practice of, you know, steering the weather at all, altering the weather, screwing with it with harp. Um, none of that stuff, you know, stuff like harp, you know, these high frequency, this and that. I don't, I don't want none of that stuff. All these ionospheric heaters in red, they got to go. That stuff should be banned as well. So my point is, if you think that geoengineering is a bad thing, then you should be, wholeheartedly against the practice of cloud seeding because and i made this very clear to ken caldera and his co cohorts in 2012 when i told him to his face on his forum and it's the most the second most viewed post on ken caldera's forum if cloud seeding scientists cannot prove statistically or scientifically at all what they are doing has efficacy after 60 years how the hell do you think you have any chance of ever legally doing geoengineering? Because you don't have enough science in any box, any computer model, geo, MIP, IAGP, GTFO. And you scientists know what I meant by the damn acronyms. And I would love to interview you because I'm just a guy who reads your stuff. And the more I read it, I don't approve of any of it. So maybe you can help me wrap my head around how you don't think that you're building weapons for the future. Last point I'm going to make, and this could be point number one through five. Weather modification as a weapon of war will supersede nuclear weapons as the greatest weapon ever created. This day, right now, we've had an arms race over nuclear weapons, you know, since they were invented. And we're right on the tipping point of a situation where cloud seeding becomes global weather modification in the form of something called geoengineering, where they block sunlight, but oh, wait for it, blocking sunlight with solar radiation management, spraying chemicals in the sky. It affects rainfall worldwide. The northern hemisphere will get wetter. The southern hemisphere 
hemis hemisphere will get drier. The only thing stopping their legal regime is figuring out how to pay the dead people. And all of this technology will be weaponized. So it should be made illegal first, foremost, and last because it will, all of this technology is going to military, the, you know, the military, American military, Russian, Chinese military. They all have this technology. They are way ahead of anything that I've ever said on any of my websites. I fully acknowledge this. So we're in a situation where the major powers of the world have weather modification technology, use it as a weapon, even though it's banned by NMOD 1978. There is no way to prove when somebody is using hostile weather modification. So cloud seeding is the local level. When cloud seeding guys on the West Coast destroy shit on the East Coast and no accountability is there, it leaves open the door for the United States to rock Cuba <laughs> with cloud seeding. 1976. We'll go there and we'll end on that. Right here, CIA project. And for some reason, none of my pictures are loading for this video. I'm having a... Te there we go. Thank you very much. But seeding near Cuba was, the, was to cause less rain, not more. It was supposed to squeeze rain out of clouds before they reached the island of Cuba. You might say we tried to embargo rain clouds. And this was the CIA Project Nile Blue, where the CIA was using cloud seeding to kill the sugar crops in, in Cuba. Economic warfare via weather. So not only did the U.S. Air Force get busted for weather using cloud seeding as a weapon in Vietnam, but the littler known story is that the CIA was busted attacking Cuban crops with cloud seeding to shut off rain. So while, you know, while Patrick's over here saying, hey, it's harmless, these guys, are, we need them on our side, this technology can equally be used to shut off rain as create rain to make bigger hail instead of little hail. They have no clue. It is gambling with your weather. Period. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. So there's the story about cloud seeding. I'm going to bookmark this one for the ages, and anytime somebody mentions cloud seeding, this is probably going to be the video I show them. I hope that this wasn't too lengthy, and it, I know it was in-depth. Um, I will try to put all of these tabs worth the links into the details of this video in a post in the near future. You can get that at climateviewer.com. And of course, guys, please subscribe to me. Um, you know, could use all the attention I can get, man, because getting the truth out there is really freaking hard. <laughs> so, uh, love you, mean it, guys. You know, um, oh, and I, I never mentioned this thing. So yeah, I've got a Patreon now. So if any of you guys want to show me some love, you know, this is the way I'm going to do it. You know, I don't, I don't make no dollars doing this. There's no ads on any of my stuff and I've got $0 per month coming in. So <laughs> if anybody wants to help me out, I'm going to try to start getting some money together to buy some video equipment. Maybe you guys will see adapt 2030 is my homeboy, David Debine. I talked to him on the phone. I even interviewed him for my first show. So yeah, good shot, Jim Nelson. Adapt 2030 is excellent. Please, everybody subscribe to that guy as well. Um, but yeah, if you guys can show me some love over here, I fully intend on buying some video equipment so that you can start seeing my face in some of these videos, maybe even, so I can go and do some stuff outside <laughs> where I'm not just always sitting at the computer here. And, you know, my wife and I are going to be working on a documentary to really flesh this stuff out because you guys have seen me say this stuff for six years now. It's time. I can't wait for some, you know, guy to come along and say, Hey, I'm, I would like to put you in a documentary. I'm going to make the documentary my damn self. So we're going to do a documentary about, um, you know, how weaponizing weather works, the history of weather modification, how it's going to be turned into a weapon, why it should be stopped and how we can do that with climate viewer 
and uh, our own citizen powered um, sensor network. So love your support guys. And I appreciate it. Spread this video around. If anybody ever mentions cloud seeding, you know, give them hell, save it. You know, cloud seeding sucks. And Jim Lee said so. And here's why, you know, if you don't believe him, then do your own freaking research. So that's my story and I'm sticking to it. And, uh, unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing's going to get better. It's not love. You mean it.